The Cold War was a fascinating time for military aircraft development. With the ever-present threat that the war might go hot one day, the West and the East were trying to get the upper hand on each other. This involved them pushing their knowledge of the aircraft to the very limits at certain stages, and creating some weird and wonderful machines along the way. The Soviet Union built some utterly ludicrous machines, but one aircraft that has stood the test of time is the rather awesome-looking Tupolev 222M Backfire Bomber. The Backfire could be in service for many years to come, with at least 100 of the types still in service. The 222M is quite possibly the ultimate bomber from the Soviet Union. The need for the 222M came out of the desire to replace its predecessor, the 222 Blinder. Tupolev commenced work on a massively updated 222 barely a year into the Blinder's first year of service. But the 222 was chosen as it was an evolutionary design, much simpler. It would be available at a lower cost. It is fair to say that the 222 became a much more successful aircraft in service than its predecessor did. It entered service in 1972 and took part in a major Warsaw Pact exercise in 1980 when it was first unveiled to the world. 222s also took part in a simulator attack against American aircraft carriers in 1982. While the type was also regularly seen being escorted out of NATO airspace, most notably though for the type was when it finally saw combat service being deployed in Afghanistan in 1987 and 1988. The 222s would fly support for the Soviet Army during their attempt to relieve the Mijadeen's siege of Kost, a town that would be besieged for more than 11 years. The 222 was a highly capable aircraft that could drop large payloads onto a target. Thus, they were used regularly in the bombing of enemy forts and bases. And the aircraft also helped work to relieve the besieged city of Kandar. The last time the 222 flew in combat in Afghanistan was in January 1989 at the Selang Pass. Despite some promise, the 222M still suffered from reliability issues, with the Air Force at one stage considering prosecuting Tupolev. Remarkably though, despite the issues, the 222M remained in service into the days of the post-Soviet Union Russia. When the Soviet Union collapsed, 370 remained in service, and later on, the Russian Federation even used the type in combat operations in Chechnya in 1995. The aircraft was even exported to the Ukrainian Air Force. Still, despite hoping for more sales to Iran, India, and China, no other examples of the aircraft have been exported abroad. Even now, only the Russian Air Force is still using the backfire. It is fair to say that the journey to where we are now with the backfire has been an interesting one, full of bumps and turbulence. It is remarkable that the development of the aircraft started before its predecessor. The 222 had even had a full year in Soviet Union service, even with the obvious improvements. The 222M was still not perfect, but it was a highly capable strategic bomber, as it showed in Afghanistan. And had the Cold War gone hot and escalated into a global conflict, it's highly likely that the backfire would have played a crucial role in both the defense of the Soviet Union and in its plans to attack the West as well.